The man on my right is an international superstar sacred geometry expert. He's a world expert in this field. And as you know, many uh, Australians actually have to go overseas to get recognised in their own country. And Jane is uh, actually involved internationally with uh, both in Singapore and in France. And uh, he has been um, studying sacred geometry for 30, 40 years? 40 years. 40 years. Yes. So he knows his stuff and he's really at the next level understanding. Jane is a secret, sacred geometry teacher. He's an international lecturer. He's the author of 27 books. He's also produced DVDs. He has a massive following on Facey B with over 140,000 followers. Jane has taught thousands of children all over Australia his sacred geometry and V mathematics program called Mathematics. Jane also involved with the Wisdom University in France, which also created a school in Singapore called the Joy of Numbers Institute. And today he's going to talk about the profound topic of the flower of life, where he's going to give, give you details of his own revelations that he's discovered in regards to the flower of life. So please make welcome a man who's so awesome he's only got one name. Please make mm -hmm. welcome Jane. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Anthony. Is the microphone on? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, so I'm, I'm very excited to be here again. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I decided to give a talk on the, the most simplest part of sacred geometry is the stepping stones of the one, two, three, one circle, two circle, three circle. So I want this to be uh, an educational talk where you, if you didn't know what sacred geometry was or is the, the language of remembering who we are in shape and pattern recognition. I, I'm going to give you a very visual episode where without having to explain everything, if I talk about things like vesica Pisces or dodecahedrons, don't worry if you don't know what they mean. I just want to expose you to like the cream or the essence or the key words that define sacred geometry. Um, so I'm, and what I'm leading up to is something we do know about um, the flower of life. It's, also, it's, it's kind of in the mass consciousness. You'll recognize this symbol. But I want to progress to a deeper understanding, like advanced level, where if we understood the, what the circle is all about, the, what, what the dimensions are inside the circle, we can get to another level of understanding called pi. And I'm going to define what pi is. But we might have to talk about something called phi. And they're different things. Pi is the relationship of the circle to the square, but phi could be like the mathematics of pine cones and sunflowers and the human body, the proportions of when, where the elbow bends, for example, is a certain ratio. If that's eight units, this is 13. And that could be the same as a pine cone. When you look at a pine cone, there could be 13 spirals going one way, but we observe that when we look closer at the pine cone, there's a apparent anti-spiral going the other way so even though you can only see, say, 13 spirals going anti-clockwise, there's actually eight going the other way. And that ratio of eight to 13, for example, is, if, is in the human hands. So if that's eight, that's 13. If um, from my feet to my belly button is 13 units, this is eight. So we call that phi ratio. But we're going to end on a note called pi, just so you know there's a difference. So I'll just start off with an introduction. So this is the phi ratio, this is the sunflower, this is the, the face of the a floret of the sunflower. And that to me that's the sun code. Unless and the sun code here is called 21 spirals one way, 34 the other. So 21 to 34 is a ratio and it's observable. So what I'm talking about is the living mathematics of nature. So this is phi, P H I, and to crack the code to understand the true harmonics of the circle, we we need to know the ratio 21 to 34. If I, um, just to say you know what pi is, imagine that that's the diameter, imagine that's one unit, we'll call it one meter, one unit. So how many times, now imagine that this one unit, this one meter is, a sh is like a shoestring, so we start from here, how many times does the diameter go around the circumference? So you start from here and you say, oh it goes once there, then we do another 
measurement two, and it comes right to here. It's a bit short. Like we, if we started here, that if we started here. So I'm trying to find the laser. So we started here, but it, the three units was there. So we call that three, and that little bit extra is called. 0.141, so at school you learnt that pi was, the diameter went once, twice, three times and a bit more, so pi is 3.141. But it works out that that's not the true value of pi, and this is quite radical. So we're going to go back to beginning to get to a conclusion that perhaps the, the reason why we're having cancer from mobile phones is that all the world's technologies, engineering, is based on pi, but if pi is a lie and it's wrong and it's disharmonic, then everything we're doing is out of sync. And if one, the prophecy is that if we correct the harmonics of the circle, we might end up with a better technology that, that's based on ecosophy. That's the relationship of the environment is in sync with nature. That's what this is all about. So let's go back to pure principle. So pure principle says, um, okay, this is the work that I've done. I turn numbers into pictures. So my introduction as an educator is that people shut down. If you say mathematics and do kinesiology, people shut down. But because we're doing it back to front, we should be teaching the language of shape and pattern and nature. Then the kids say, oh, why is the sunflower 2134? And then they'll want to learn the mathematics. So we have to reverse it. So my whole work is called the art of number this thing here, translation of numbers, and it works out that a lot of the patterns that we get are atomic structures. So, so before we look at the flower of life, I want to talk a little bit about pent and hex. Pent means five, hex means six. There's some critical shift when we go from the hexagon to the pentagon. Then we'll look at the thing called seed of life. You all know the snowflake geometry. We're going to look at something called the fruit of life, 13 circles around the one. With, then there's a flower of life, we'll call that the blueprint of creation. Then what would happen if one circle touches the heart of another circle? It's called the mother of all creation because everything that I know is in the circle, especially when two intersect. Um, then there's also, if we've got time, we've got egg of life and the beginning of our journey was one became two became four eggs and spheres, so that's cosmogenesis. And then the conclusion is, if we've got time, is pi, what's the true value of pi according to the mathematics of nature? So you're going to get an overview on all the different possibilities of how circles overlay. So just so you know, there's other ones. There's trees of life and metatrons cubes. This is called a fractal when the, the small cube is inside the big cube when things nest intelligently and they're self-similar because the cube, small cube has a relationship to the big cube, we call it fractal. So that's another word. Fractal does not mean fractionation, it's the opposite of a fraction, it's holistic. So we're going to cover that word fractal. So just a little bit about the Pentagon, because you know at school when we always learn about the triangle, then you learn about the square, then suddenly we go from the square straight to the hexagon, the society has deleted all the memory of the Pentagon. The Pentagon is the key to all sacred geometry, yet at school there's no mentioning of Pentagon, it's deleted. So I'm only putting back into the curriculum what was originally there in our textbooks. All our maths came from the Greeks 2,000 years ago, or two and a half thousand years we had Pythagoras. I'll show you a picture of Pythagoras. There he is. And they worshipped the Pentagon, the, the Pentacle, and that's a fractal because it goes infinitely large, it can get bigger and bigger, or smaller and smaller, but the ratio, the scale, stays the same. So this is a symbol of the medical and the health, because every cell in our body, every protein in our body is a five-pointed star, yet we've deleted the memory of the protein, so we can't go into our DNA and remember who we are, because there's no reference to it. It's like they pulled out a chip or a, a plug. So that, that was a symbol of Pythagoras. So if you wanted to study and learn sacred geometry, you had to do one year of silence, to stop talking, and one year of fasting to clean the body. So once the physical body was ready, you were ready to learn the language of these multidimensional forms. And the other thing was, there was the symbol was, they had five letters, like H, Y, G, I, A. So those five angles were ascribed five letters of the Greek, and it's spelt Hygieia. 
or Hygieia. So that was the, the name for the goddess of health and healing. So somehow sacred geometry and pentacle is related to the language of sacred geometry and health. So if you're not healthy, we can't access our DNA. So we've lost all this knowledge. I've also started with magic squares up the top here. You've got this angel, very, this is called, it's a divine melancholia, divine sadness, because we've lost the meaning of all this amazing um, iconography here. There's a magic square, it all adds up to the same. There's the, and it was done in 1514. See the bottom numbers, 1514. So Albrecht Durer did this in 1514. All the columns and rows are harmonics because everything adds up to 34. The, the four rows, the four corners, the four centers, opposite pairs, diagonals, every, anywhere you look at four numbers, it adds, it's, rings a bell. So that's called a harmonic. Harmos means order. So there's numbers that are ordered, but how do we apply this to our technology? Maybe that's a future circuit board. Why, why would a great artist put a code of numbers there? Because there's something, maybe from the time of Atlantis, these were encoded with high knowledge. So that's Albrecht Dürer, and what he did was he's famous for taking the Vesica Pisces, when one circle, the circle of God, penetrates the circle of the human, the physical, there's an interaction between the divine and the human, the two hearts are touching, everything opens up when one, when the, one the two circles unite through the centre, something interesting happens. We do a bit of geometry with the compass, we get the hexagon, the six, and on top of the six we get the five, but that's what DNA looks like. This is how DNA arranges itself. I think I've got a picture of DNA. Um, so what that would mean is that if you have, if DNA has got two helix, one spiral going one way and one going the other way, so imagine you're, you're, you're climbing up a spiral staircase, you're going up the staircase and at one moment here you said I'm going to slice, it's called a transverse cut, if I slice DNA at a critical point, what does the, what's the geometry of all the um, amino acids? I think it looks like this. So this, these books that I get this stuff have all been out of print. They have not been reprinted. It's very rare information, but every child should know that the slice of the helix across there is, is a golden rectangle. So if this is 21, that's 34. That rectangle is not any rectangle. It obeys the mathematics of the sunflower, 21, 34. They hexa hexagonal atoms and then the pentagon. So there's something about six and five, we have to give it a name, we'll call it pentahexa. This has got a lot to do with the circle. So that's what it looks like if you're looking down the top-down view of the DNA matrix. The word matrix means womb, it was a Latin word for womb because the ma, the maternal, is the mother of creation. So matrix just means that which creates. Um, so what's the 3D version of a pentacle? So um, I did a workshop once with a lot of bikies once at a festival and they all worshipped the pentacle but I told them no you should be worshipping worshiping this because the, the 3D form of the five-pointed star is the dodecahedron so the key to DNA is that there's a critical tilt angle um, the pathway that you see of the helix are touching these points but there's a critical turning point so if you stack this, these 12 pentagons on a vertical axis and follow the vertices, it would form the twin helix. So there's something about the rotation of these shapes. Shape stores memory, it's a code. So that's called do deca, because do means two, dec means ten, as in decimal. So do deca means twelve. So twelve is the key to the language of light. Um, and why do we have 360 circle degrees in a circle? Because the numbers associated to this Pythagorean triangle, if you squared 216 and squared 288, the sum of that squared plus that squared equals that squared. And 360 is the harmonics of the circle. We could have had 400 degrees. Napoleon said we're going to have 400 degrees, but we change it to 360 because 36 can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, like it's divisible by many numbers. So there's something sacred about 36, which is six squared, all goes back to the root of six. So 360 is a special number. 216 is six times six times six, so the number of the beast, which is really a sun code, the number of the sun, six times six times six is six cubed. And 288 is double the light harmonic. So double 144 is this got to do with the speed of light. So these are important numbers. So 
mathematicians, when we see this, we kind of go, we're in awe of this phenomena of that squared plus that squared equals that. So that's another section. You need, that's why we need to know Pythagoras' theorem. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Um, this is called a gold, this is another triangle called the golden triangle. So if I just took that tall triangle there, the ratio, if this is 21, well this is 34. And it's got the 36 degree angle there and 72 at the base. So there's something special about a golden triangle. And you're going to see how all this relates to the circle later on. Um, um, Rena, the mother of my two daughters, decided to do Facebook for me and um, we've got a good following on Facebook but some of the pictures we learn about what people like and when we put this picture up it had like 10,000 10, likes on it and shares and it's no other picture like we do a lot of things on Tesla and other interesting shapes but this interesting circle that's a Chinese compass that's all it is it's a, but look how deep and rich it's encoded but somehow people tapped into that and responded and it created this huge wave of conversation like to me it was just a picture I'm not actually even excited about it but then when I realized how it got spread it around the world it, it blew us out so there's something about the circle the yin yang encoded information the circle layers of layers, there's something in that, so I've, that's inspired me to do a lot of more research, so it's interesting code. Oh. Pushing the, okay, so that section, that was just an introduction. So set part two, what's the seed of life? So this is the story of creation. God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. So you'll see that there's six circles, day, day one, day two, day three, day four, five, six. And there's the seventh in the centre of the Sabbath, perhaps, which is a Saturday. But th there's a something is completed. So we all know the seed of life. Every, you see that in everywhere. I mean, you'll find kids, if they're on the telephone and they're, they're doodling, it doesn't matter if it's right or left hand, you'll know that most people will draw this shape mindlessly. So we can say... There's something in that, it's in the mass consciousness. In fact, the template who you saw last night, my friend Jeeva and Juliet, the most popular jewellery all around the planet is the six around the one. So here, here's the six around the one is spheres. So there's six spheres. And that's carbon, that's a nano, this has got to do with the nanotube. The next technology is called carbon seven, the six around the one. They're making metal now instead of steel where you can pick up a whole car based on paper thin polycarbonates, whatever they're called. Because the atom, this is one atom, imagine this like chicken wire, see the hexagon? If you just put lots and lots of hexagons together like chicken wire, you can create nanotubes and nanoparticles. And that's the future in um, alchemy, that we can create anything we want, paper thin, on the atomic level. And it's all based on the six around the one. Um, oh, that's the, um, a slice, a slice, uh, one atom thin in nanotechnology now. This is the future and it's all based on the seed of life. Carbon nanotubes. And it's interesting that when we look at a eucalyptus pod, it just happens the seed. Why does nature uh, arrange its seeds with the six touching the center? That's th we want to keep, that's our connector. We have to keep going back to nature. Oh, this is what nature does. So we should to comprehend it, we, we learn it, then we copy it. We should apply this to our technology. There's people blessing oh, there's people blessing the water with the seed of life, or could be the golden spiral, but this is thanks to the work of Emoto, whose website was www.thankyou.com, because when we say thank you, that, that blessing is so powerful, like I love you, that it changes the molecular structure of water. We can prove that. So Emoto was the bridge between the science and the metaphysics, so that a, um, a priest who blesses the water and can get rid of demons says because the water is, is charged with consciousness and light and love. So that's a good thing to do. So that's a nice... Um, lead light that people draw. So six is all about snowflakes and pretty snowflakes. So we all know this. So this is nature, it's beautiful. Um, I'm doing a series of things called decal. So I w I've created this 
as a sticker that peels off it's an adhesive transparency and you put it on the glass so when the sun shines into the seed of life it projects the geometry into your room and it changes the 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 space that's feng shui feng shui is a, it cleanses the space or you could put it on your computer or so we want the, the next generation of children to grow up with a familiarity with all these beautiful, simple geometry, seed of life. But if you stare into it, you'll see more. It's basic hexagon. So what a hexagon is, is every time you see hex, it's really the shadow, it's really the shadow of a cube. So there's a cube, but if I turn it around, I had it first go, now I can't get it. <laughs> So can you see the hex, the hex view of a 3D shape becomes 2D and I just, it's a critical tilt and there's the hexagon. So anything hex is cubic in nature. We're trying to really get to pent. This is all about, we love the hexagon, it's the cube of space, it's the container. It turns, that you're in the car, you turn the key on, the car's on, but it's not going anywhere until we understand the pentacle, the five, then movement will happen. We call it the Merkaba. So, but it's interesting that inside the six here, um, my artist Aurel from France, I have a special artist that does all this for me, he, uh, he found the, a beautiful Star of David, for example. So this is two triangles that interpenetrate, but the three-dimensional view of the Star of David, see if, if I turn this, it's a square really. So see it's just a square. This is the atomic structure of crystal. And the funny thing is, this is also the atomic structure of eight cells. This is what you looked like when you were in the first hour of your womb, in the womb of creation, you were um, the, the same structure as quartz, the eight original cells. But that's what you're looking at. You're looking, and the cosmic people call it the Merkaba, which is the language of um, time travel. Oh, I'll just grab that. But it's, it's the ratios that are inside of that that are important. So people have been spinning these shapes and ending up in mental hospitals. I'm coming up to a little section where do not spin your etheric tetrahedra because you'll end up in distorted reality time and space. There's a lot of people doing it. It's called a flower of life meditation and it's Drumbala Melchizedek who promoted it, recanted and said, oops, I'm sorry, we've got to stop spinning this Atlantean geometry that, we, that is advanced, but we're, we're only amplifying all our own disharmonic codes, all our anger, hate, jealousy, hate, all that stuff that we haven't worked on only gets amplified when you spin these shapes. So you have to be very careful. Okay, so um, okay, part three is the fruit of life. So the seed of life is done. Something happens when, here's the six around the one, we got that. But what happens when you put another six around? We end up with another matrix of 13. One plus six plus the other six. And inside is that is the universe. From that, and you know that 13 has been demonised as the 13th floor is always missing because it's evil because it's actually the key into the grid of wholeness. So there's something special about that. So we just colour it in. If you join, you get, so this is a workbook for children. Join this dot. If this is a unified field, Einstein would say everything is connected. So this point must connect every other point. And that's what you get. You get a cube within the cube. You get the Star of David within the Star of David. But in fact, you get everything. You get the five platonic solids, the five elements, all contained within the one with the six and another six. That's the universe. The five elements, everything is generated from the 13 circles. So we've got to pay attention to that. Um, you can see a lot, you can see, a, if you squint your eyes, you'll see a small cube within the bigger cube. Oh, that shows it a little bit better. So that's called fractal, or it's, a, it's, it's actually called a fourth dimensional geometry. It's, it's got many names, tesseract, hypercube. Um, my artist, I got my artist to just highlight a few things so I can make it as a sticker. And that's the other version. But this time I decided to put three Star of David's nesting. There's something, when we nest one within the other, it's a great geometrical tool to embed the self-similar shape and that leads to fractality. Okay, then we've, that, so that's fruit of life. Now we want to know, well, what's flower of life? What's the fuss? Everyone's into the flower of life. It's still a hexagon. If you look at that, you're still looking at cube, hexa, um, boxed in geometry, it's not, it's limited compared to unlimited, but still important. That's from Leonardo da Vinci. 
And he, Leonardo left us lots of diaries with all this amazing sketches of things. It's all flower of life. So we, we all, so that's the one that every, the whole world, in 10 years time, we won't be looking at this. We're going to be looking at another shape that's got 30 diamonds. This is the future shape. You should be seeing that as a sphere. What's the spherical 3D? That's only flatland. But in the future, we're going to be studying something. It's actually this one here. That's the earth grid. That's where all the sacred sites, like if that's pyramid, this is Uluru. We've got um, all the sacred sites around the world are on these. And this is all based on a diamond. If this is eight, this is 13, that's the pine cone. So these aren't just any diamonds, they're golden diamonds because the ratio obeys the pine cone. So there's 30 of these, 60 joins. There's something very special about this and no one I know is even talking about it. So when I say I'm channeling or I'm accessing certain geometries, multidimensional geometries, I know that this is the template, this is the starting point, but there's a lot more to come. So we do need to understand the flower of life a bit more, um, which is generated from the fruit of life. It's been found on the ceiling 2,000 years ago. The mystery, it's somewhere up here, but 2,000 years ago they found the flower of life etched in the stone, the granite stone, but the thing was they didn't have technology, laser technology 2,000 years ago, so no one knows how they etched the flower of life in the ceilings of, is that Karnak or Abydos, sorry, the Assyrian temple. So there's lots of mysteries about the flower of life and the origin of it, but it looks like every culture has it, and Drumvala Melchizedek seeded that. He's world famous, but he was the one that was teaching that you've got to spin your Merkaba and recant it and said, no, you've got to come from the heart. We must go to connect with the heart first before we travel through time and space. Um, so that's the Merkaba where um, the, the, the up, upward tetrahedron is called it male and, and that spins to your right which is the male side and that's your mental body. The other tetrahedron pointing down is the feminine, goes to the left, the female. That's your emotional body and they're meant to be spinning together in the sunflower code 2134. So they're trying to obey nature. So let's spin our tetrahedrons and go to the outer limits of time and space, but they crashed. So Drumvala said, stop it. And all the teachers I know, they're still not stopping. They're making a lot of money teaching flower of life. So my message is do not spin. Rather just give thanks and gratitude for all that we have. You can get into another space with all this. But I, I feel like I have a message for people. I meet all the people in my Byron Bay area who've done these workshops and they end up crashed. And I have to lay them in my forest for three, four days just to get grounded again because they literally got lost in time and space. So there's a, there's a caution about that because we're giving our power to something. And the, the problem is all these people who did the flower of life, they're all taking lots of drugs. They're all taking ayahuasca or overdose with marijuana, all this stuff. And what's happening is that when we take drugs and spin geometries, we're giving our power to something external. We're not saying that drugs don't have a medical use, they do. But when someone becomes addicted to something that's outside of them, you're disempowered. So that's my point here, is that you don't want to be mixing substances with this journey. Um, my friend in, in France called Dan Winter, he's developed a thing called, instead of therapy, he's put the word phi into therapy, could become therapy, and people lay down who have cancer, and we're taking this gas, these two gases go through the body, it's like a zapper. In the old days, people, 30 years ago, someone invented a zapper and it destroyed all the bugs, the nasty bugs in your stomach, but also destroyed all the good bugs. They finally took 30 years with a study of the golden ratio that there is a certain frequency that, we, that can zap all the parasites in your body, but not zap the good ones, the internal fauna flora. So this is the solution. It's all based on the golden ratio, 2134. And it's based on a thing called kryptonite. You know, we all grew up on Superman. The gas inside that thing that's doing the magic, anti-cancer cure, is based on an inert gas. In your periodic table, we have, um, um, there's a certain class of elements that have all their outer shells full. And it's, it's beautiful, instead of having one electron or two, it's all full, so what happens is it can make this. So when the inert gases and all the platinum crystals, they all have full outer valence, so they create sacred geometry. So these, all these beautiful shapes, like even this shape here, the dodeca, 
um, the star tetrahedron, these are all um, fully manifested forms that are re reminding the body to access the original geometries, the blueprint of creation. We veered this way, we lost some connection, but this reminds the body of the original information. So that's all based on kryptonite. I never would have thought, I've just come back from this conference all about kryptonite. I'm, I was laughing at that. <laughs> so you can access this in um, Lismore. Brisbane's got a new centre in one place in Perth, but if the TGA find out about this, they have to sell these, the parts. It's got a Tesla coil, there's Tesla coils. It's all this advanced technology, but we have to keep it hush because you can't sell these units as a whole. They have to be disassembled, otherwise the TGA will shut it all down. It's a $33,000 unit. Um, okay, in ancient Egypt as well, We've got some advanced technology, not just the flower of life that was up in the ceiling, but look at these amazing like plasma type tubes that are carved also in the wall. There's a, this is all the lost technology. It's kind of relating to that, the plasma tube that you just saw in the Therify, the, the anti-cancer machine. It's very, we're kind of remembering, perhaps we're remembering the real non-harmful technology that the ancient people knew. Uh, I won't go into the tree of life. In fact, I don't even believe that there's 10 spheres. I think that's disharmonic. I believe there should be 12. I think this, they've given us a lot of stuff in esoteric books to keep us away from the original 12 around the one. So I think that's not correct, but people are using it. It's called the Kabbalah. Um, okay, that's the star tetrahedron. I'll just skip a lot of this stuff. Um, that's meant to move, let me see. That's just tiling the flower of life side by side and it's really nice to explore different patterns and shapes that we can get from all these the six around the one um, that's a cloth from Bali, little baby nice thing to lay on I guess so basically if you were in a research and you saw this crystal, this is a crystal of beryl and it makes a hexagonal diffraction pattern, you know it's a crystal, it's cubic because the crystal if I joined all the, it's actually this shape, but if I joined these eight vertices, it's actually a cube. So this is actually a cube. And so we just got a bit more information. Oh, do I, how do I get onto that? <laughs> yeah, and that's, a th we're interested now in the three dimensions of the flower of life, not just, we're interested, we're leading from the circle to the sphere because that's more holistic. Um, we can't really tile the sphere with hexagons. That's something that can't happen. The, the real, um, the ultimate shape for tiling the, the sphere is the pentagon and hexagon. Remember, I talked about pentahexa. The soccer ball, that, this is not the soccer ball because it's got triangles in it, but there's the pentagon. But I don't have the soccer ball here, but this is penta and triangle. That's close to what maps the sphere because you can't use hexagons. It doesn't map it. So we need the pentagon to fulfill the harmonics of the circle. But the question is like the only three-dimensional flower of life I've ever seen ever is the one in Beijing. The food dog seems to be protecting this ancient knowledge. Why, why do we have this kind of beast with massive talons and it's protecting the spherical geometry of a flower of life? Because it was sacred knowledge and only certain people could perhaps access this stuff. Um, so someone, Garrett, is exploring hyperdimensional space, eight-dimensional geometry. Leonardo da Vinci, oh there's the soccer ball, see the penta, it's funny everyone's kicking around the soccer ball, right, the whole world's kicking around the soccer ball, yet it's one of the most sacred shapes in the universe. And the other sacred shape is if you had one sphere interpenetrate another sphere, that's called the vesica Pisces, what's the three dimensional area where they intersect, it's the rugby ball. So the other shape that's sacred is the rugby ball and everyone's kicking that around. <laughs> Okay, so I've done some stickers on that with a bit of information, different colours. Um, so we've looked at that. We, we might come to the Egg of Life now. That's a very interesting one. Oh, what's this title called? This one is called, um, okay, oh, Egg of Life. So just simply, in, so the flower of life is the mother of all form. And see how we can isolate these eight spheres are actually in this matrix. So we can basically see that that was our eight original cells. It was cubic. It was a container of information and it exists today at the base of your spine. So um, I'm interested in, st like, if, if, if no one had heard of sacred geometry, we had to start from the beginning, I would say originally we were one sphere. 
and there was this, this geneticist called Daryl Langham. He studied sesame seeds. He found that when you put sesame seeds that make the tahini, when you grew them in circles, they produced more oil and they grew better. So there's something about growing things in circles. But we know that the circle, um, so he noticed that around all the plants, that he, he was a bio plant geneticist, he noticed that there was 12 uh, before the, the one cell, the zygote, the father-mother union, separated into two cells. He noticed there was always 12 things, 12 entities around the centre. Have I got another slide of him? Let me see. Yeah, that, that's him here. Yeah, so he's quite, no one, his work's all been shut down. You can't even find this information I'm showing you now. It all got shut down about his work. And what, what basically he said was that there was 12 around the one here. So imagine there's a centre, this point has got 12 nodes. So these are the 12 spheres that touch the centre sphere. Um, but before we get to the 12 around the one, we have to understand Here's the, the flower, here's the seed of life. We've got six around the one. Um, I think it's the next slide. So in two dimensions, the puzzle is we have a circle. You give it to a five-year-old. If you give them all these coins, how many coins the same size all touch tangent one another? When they count, oh, there's six. So, and that makes the Star of David. So we all know that. But the puzzle that Daryl Langham realised was that there's a cosmic shape in three dimensions called the 12 around the 1. So the next question is, OK, imagine I'm a sphere and I know that I can have these six spheres, one, two, three, four, five, six around my waist, but we've got to realise there's three on top here, there's three on top there, and there's another three below here. So this is called the 12 around the 1. So this is really a model of 13. It's the 12 plus the middle. And if Magic Spider said, goes in there and says, I'm going to join the 12 centres of the 12 spheres, so not just um, not ignore the middle, but if I join the 12 spheres, we end, up with get, we end up getting this shape here, this model. So this is called the cube octahedron. So another name for this is called cube octa. So, you can, so that's male and female geometry. So the sphere is feminine, but when we join every centre, one to the other, we end up with a fractal. This is the most amazing shape because it's the only shape in the universe where the inside, if I hold this, the, the, there's 12 vector or radials in the middle, I'm holding one of the radii, let's call it a matchstick. It just happens, there's no other shape in the universe that does this, but this shape, that length is the same as the outside. So the, this is the only shape in the universe where the inside is the same as the outside because we needed this 12-ness to complete the hologram. Without the 12, it wouldn't work. So this is a very exciting shape. No one's talking about it. Very few people are talking about this shape. And it shape shifts. I didn't bring the model, but there's a shape that when I push it down, it creates the five platonic solids. I actually left it, I'm sorry. Um, so this is all Daryl Langham. That, so what happened was Daryl Langham studied plants all his life and then he switched his attention to the human zygote. He said, oh my God, everything in the universe, plants and human, they all have 12 around the one before they split the first mitosis. So they're doing jewellery, um, all sorts of stuff. That's my mentor, Buckminster Fuller, who talked all about the jitterbug here. That's the 12 around the one. That's it with 12 circles. So I could do the same thing here. So I can grab... I can grab the 12 circles. So I've got four spheres, or four circles. If I adjust them quite neatly, I'll end up with six squares. When I get my six squares and eight triangles, that's cube octa. Looks like an atomic structure like what NASA use. So that's the same shape. I'll show it to you in another way. Um, so another cube octahedron is a toy. There's a magnetic toy here. So he so here's a cube, so this is a shape-shifting thing. If I take this magnetic toy, open up that, the dimensions of that are based on the golden ratio. When you have a double cube, it's a very important ratio. But look at the negative space inside the cube. It fits an octahedron. And you'll see that the fluorite crystal is an octahedral crystal. It fills the negative space. But I can take this cube, do another fold, and another fold, and I've just got the 12 around the 1. I started with the cube, so this is a shape-shifting molecule. The 12 around the 1 has the ability to form 
other substances. That's called alchemy. The word chem was the ancient name for Egypt. So this is a very special shape. It's a 12 around the 1. I have it as the, on the table. I've, I've made it for some children, the magnetic toy. So there's my version of that for children. So it's called the 12. So that the cell hasn't divided yet. This is what exists before creation begins. The 12 around the 1, cube octahedron, people, there's the jewellery, the crystals. You can program it like anything you want. So um, that's a good way to look at the 12 internal vectors. It also has 24 edges. So 24 is a very key number. It's an anointed number based in the Fibonacci pattern. And there's 24 triangles. If I, had, if, if I could show you a triangle, there's 24 triangle vectors that meet in the middle. Everything about it is balanced. It's all 60 degree angles, it's balanced. Um, the, shadow, the shadow of it is the VW symbol. There's the V and there's a W. So perhaps Hitler used that as an empowering symbol because the people's car, the shadow forms the VW. Okay, so now, then the cell separated. The one decided to become the two, right? And then the two became the four. So when we have four cells and you join the four centres, you, you form a tetrahedron. So the first shape, the, the funny thing is you were a, a tetrahedron, you were a pyramid. The first, the deepest memory you have is that at one point in your creation you were a shape. So this is why it's called the language of shape and pattern. So that's the four. Then you um, this is very important in a day workshop with children. We get them to build that with big sticks. And what happens when you join the four centres of the four triangles? In the middle, you get an inverted pyramid. But there's actually 27 of these. The critical thing about this geometry is that I can take 27 smaller tetrahedra to build that shape. So there's something sacred about the number 27, which is what, which is the Rubik's cube. You know that three times three times three Rubik's cube is 27. But 27 was a important number in sacred geometry. When we double, when we do a binary on the 27, we keep doubling 27, 54, 108, 216, um, 432. Help me here, Robert. 800, 864. <laughs> One two seven eight, which is twelve, and one two, <laughs> and one two seven eight is twelve cube. Twelve times twelve times twelve was one two seven eight. Double that, you get three four five six. It's so beautiful. That is the most important sequence that Robert and I know of in the universe. It's a based on the twenty seven. So it's fascinating that the little tetra in the middle, a fractal, it means self similar. The inside's the same as the outside rings this thing about 27, it's waving its hand saying, I'm important, so we, we study 27. I've been studying number 27 all my life and it's got a lot to do with Bruce Cathy's Earth Grid. The, the, when we talk about ley lines, it goes way back to Bruce Cathy and Robert over there brought Bruce Cathy out. How many years ago? 30 years ago? Uh, not that long. No? <laughs> 20 years ago? Anyway. Uh, 2003. Oh great, okay, so only 15 years ago. So this is a curriculum for star kids. This is the future. If we're all these psychic kids being born, I have in place six workbooks over there. We're putting in place the children w discovering this. We're not giving it to them. We're saying join the dots. That's all we've been doing for, th for 30 years. And then here, the four became the eight. And that's what I said. This is what we became, the eight original cells. Um, star tetrahedral rem remembrance. Um, and this is the flower of life where you spin it and end up lost in space. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't go there. It is Atlantean science, it's very sacred, but I don't think we're ready. It's like the disclosure project at the end of revealing all this knowledge about UFOs, the conclusion in a nutshell was we've got the technology to clean up all the planet, but we're not emotionally ready. It's, it's almost like if everyone had a laser beam, a laser gun, and I'm having a fight with my neighbour, which I am, we'll, <laughs> we'll just shoot each other, we'll just kick, because we're all still angry and territorial, and that's my part of the land. And so we're not ready to have laser technology, and that's what this is all about, that we have to clean up the emotional body first, 
before all this is given to you. I've just as an so the flower of life there's the cube. I've also got a dictionary if anyone's interested in any sacred number like 27, 64, a million and eight. I've got it all in three books called a harmonic it's called the harmonic stairway. But I've also got another eight books just on defining the words like what's dodeca, what's fractal. So if anyone's really interested, I don't have them as books, they're all as uh, PDF files like ebooks. I can, I, I've got these available. It's a lot of work. So this is the cube within the cube. So this is what we looked like when we went from eight cells. We decided to become 16 cells, a binary code. So what, the, what's got 16 corners? There's the Metatron's cube, the cube within the cube. But as an animation, it's about we're learning how to turn ourselves inside out. Where that's a complete fractal. It's self-similar. At the infinitely small is the same as the infinitely large and everything is interconnected. That could be base, the basis for our future technology because we understand what fractal is. But if our, if our intention is not pure, this will only amplify disharmonic thoughts. So it's all about pure intention or it goes nowhere. That's just another version of it. Um, it's just a different version of the same thing. So perhaps I, my, the reason I'm showing you this eye candy is because um, I believe that in the future, if we can teach the curriculum through animation, we, don't, we won't have to struggle like we did at school. So this is, by just looking at that, you get insight and epiphanies and remembrance. So that's why it's important. Um, then the 16 cells, here's another one for Robert. 16 became 32. Double 32 became 64. It's all on the board. Oh, is it? Oh, it's on the board. <laughs> Oh, that's cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> okay, something happened when we became double two five six was five. So when we became five hundred and twelve cells, this is what we looked like. We became a ring, a torus. The Latin word for ring is a torus. So that's so this stark male geometry collapsed into a blob. And I believe there's only two directions. There's no such thing as six directions: north, south, east, and west. That's just a, a head trip. The real thing about compass is that there's an in, this is what we looked like, this was our mouth, there's only the direction of going in, and on the other side is the bum, <laughs> that's it, that's, everything's just coming out. So that's what you looked like when you were like, probably what half an hour of creation is a Taurus, that's it. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's also a tornado, so we know this is beautiful, like Alex Gray, who I met in New York. I taught all his students in New York because they were already switched on and they wanted to hear about the art of numbers. So I got access to see the original paintings on columns. These were done in, around columns. So the human body field is auric as well, it's toroidal as well. Um, when we feel compassion and love, we, we emit that frequency of the torus within the torus, it's another fractal, golden ratio, permits access to the infinitely large and infinitely small, there's no separation, so we, we and that's based on the Fibonacci sequence, that's an advanced diagram, that's the slice, so here's the torus, but what's inside the torus is like if we got the slinky and um, we, know, we know if we join the slinky we get the torus, right, that can turn itself inside out, but if I slice the torus in half, um, what do you get? You just get like the figure eight. So you're a healer and say, oh, my business card is a figure eight. But you're really trying to say, I'm connected to the multidimensional language of the tori. And so that's what the figure eight infinity really means. Because the figure eight infinity symbol accesses all worlds non-destructively. Non so that's in the ratio, if you knew the Fibonacci sequence, it goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 5 to 8 to 13, 21. There's, it's not midpoints. So when we look at our hand, the, the distance from the digits here is 1 to 2 to 3 to 5 to 8 to 13. So every part of our body reflects this language of the torus. 
Um, that was another Facebook post that when we put the Taurus up, this blueprint, whatever that means, it got 10,000, like thousands and thousands of likes. So I, I realised that people are relating to this thing called Taurus, even though we don't know what it is, really, they were, the, the, the response from Facebook from that, every time we put that up we get like 10,000 shares. I just, again, so there's a key in that, why is everyone responding? Because people want the original knowledge, the truth, we're looking, we're, we're truth seekers. What's inside the Taurus? That's a good question. It could be a fourth dimensional sphere, it could be the access to the higher knowledge. And that's just another animation. Um, one of my spaced out friends getting embedded in the icosahedron. I'm a, I've been studying dome building, so my intention is to build structures like this. I'm actually a bricklayer, builder all my life, but this is what I want to create, so the uh, playgrounds for children. So this is the cube octahedron, 12 around the one. It can, there's the model I didn't bring, I should have that, but when you squeeze that, you make all the five platonic solids. So that's really important. How much time do I have? Still plenty? Oh, one minute. Okay, so. <laughs> So there's this thing called the Vesica Pisces where it contains all the root harmonics. I'll teach this, I have a workshop coming up where I'm going to show you all of this language of the circle. So the MasterCard symbol uses all of this information. Um, there's golden angles, pentagrams within the pentagram. So my conclusion is coming to a point that when we study Pi, We've been adding it, that we've been trying to calculate pi through segments like slices of a pizza, but it must be based on the sunflower pine cone harmonics. And this guy, Billy Meyer, about 50 years ago, said that when we correct pi, the truth will appear, that the technology will go from cancerous to fractal. And it's all in the mathematics of the pyramid. The more you study phi and pi, that they're not separate. Pi and phi today are separate. We must change the math and study the circles and realise everything in the circle is based on 1.618. You can see the square, the, the triangle, the square and the pentagram in the circle are all based on the mathematics of the pine cone, the 813 counterspin ratio. So this is perhaps one of the most psychoactive diagrams we could ever do. Um, we know it's in the fruit, so we know it's real, like the apple and the fruit, it's in the human body, um, seeds, skip flowers. This is, my th this is what I'm going to do on the workshop. I'm going to show you the, the cross that's generated from the true value of pi, and it's called 3.144. It's a really important harmonic number. Um, I pretty much worship this. I know that this is correct and I can challenge any mathematician. It's going to be put on my tombstone up here. <laughs> when, I, when I'm finished and gone, that's what I want to be remembered for 3.144. So I'm doing, so I'm doing a workshop. I'm do, there's other people talking about it, not just me, but I seeded it. It's a password to go through the vortex. We've got to keep meditating and looking at shadows and and honour the children with this mathematics. And it all comes from my main book. Uh, that's, I have that book on the table. My life's work's all in the art of number. And I've got a workshop coming up on tomorrow that um, Anthony's organised a day workshop. If you want to know more about everything I've just done here, if you want to know more about the true value of pi and all the circle harmonics, it's coming up here. Well, there it is. Yeah, so tomorrow's workshop on the 10th is a whole day with the PowerPoints and all the shapes and models and books. So if you want to get inducted into this knowledge, I, I've got a whole day. It's normally a two-day workshop, but we can do it in a day. There's a few worksheets. Um, I've got a thing in Yukai next month in October. Um, I know this is my one in November at Lennox Head, aiming for international audience that people come and study all this stuff. There's one in Yukai next month, Mwoolumba, with the CIA group. And this, this presentation is also available as an e-book. So if anyone wanted all this information as an e-book, it's about $33. Just contact me and my website's jane108.com. And I want to thank you for your time. Thank you.